Hey everyone, this week we've got a special treat for you. One of the legendary gods of Pokemon, whispered about on schoolyards around the world as a paragon of power. That's right, it's Peekaboo. For those of you who weren't in the game back in 2000, let me give you a brief rundown of what Peekaboo is. Back when Gold and Silver were about to come out in Japan, Pokemon released a bunch of promo images of Pokemon that had yet to come out, including our blue friend here. But with all the cool kids not knowing there was a new Pokemon game coming out, pictures of this weird blue mouse thing were interpreted as one of the legendary Poke Gods. Even though there's nothing really godly about it design-wise, but hey, we were kids. Hidden Pokemon that numbered past 150, with Peekaboo being a legendary water-type evolution of Pikachu. Pikachu that was supposed to be amazingly rare and powerful. And then everyone saw the thing in Pikachu's summer vacation and they all realized that it was just another Pokemon. So yeah, that rumor ended up being about as true as the Mist Stone you can get in Seafoam Islands to evolve your Mew into Mew 3. You know what? That's for an entirely different video. But anyway, Meryl has an evolution, which is Azumaro, which actually looks even more like Pikachu. But maybe, just maybe, that Pokemon could have had the power of a Poke God. So how good was Azumaro actually? Let's... Yeah, get on with it. Let's find out. Well, it turns out, not very good. At least at the beginning. Its rotund belly bellies its beefiness, but it had absolutely nothing to complement that beefiness except for padding on it. With Belly Drum, it had potentially huge attacking stats, which it absolutely couldn't take advantage of, given that there's no physical water moves because it's pre-Diamond and Pearl and its atrocious speed. It ran Surf, Hidden Power Ghost, and either Return or Double Edge for maximum neutral coverage. But really, Azumarill was pretty bad in general. It had the option to run Curse, which almost pairs with its stats well, but its move pool and attacking stats are both just pretty bad. Azumarill splashed down in underuse in the Smoggy meta, and it wasn't even good enough to receive a ranking for Nintendo Cup. Like, it really, it's, it's just not even on here. Generation 3, though, gave Azumarill a huge boost. You know what I'm talking about. It's Child. That's right, Azurill is here. Actually though, Azuril is one of the weirdest Pokemon to ever come out. It's just a crying baby and it doesn't even have its water typing. And it really has no reason to exist. It's one of the only two Pokemon in Gen 3 to be related to something from a previous generation. The other being Why Not. But hey, at least Why Not makes it easier to get Wobbuffet. Meryl isn't hard to get in the first place. But anyway, for real though, Generation 3 did give Azumarill one big advantage. Huge power. Which at the time was its evolutionary line's signature ability. With doubled attack, Azumarill had a possibility of actually doing some damage to opposing teams. Keep in mind that it's not just a double base attack, it's after all calculations. So all of Azumarill's investment into attack got doubled as well. Its biggest issue was its low speed, which it circumvented by running a sub punch set, augmented with Sing or Encore to gain more chances to set up its substitutes. With 100 attack focus punches, Azumarill could actually be nominally quite threatening if it was able to set up. However, its lack of a great move pool and resilience on the set meant that it definitely wasn't a top tier threat. It was completely walled by Weezing and most other things that could resist fighting type moves like Gyarados, Salamence, Gengar, and Kledo. Hidden Power Ghost patched up some of those problems, but Azumarill was still an incredibly limited Pokemon. While it had its possible places in overuse because of good matchups on water types and Blissey, Azumarill was still in underuse, but most definitely better than before. Choice Band was also an option, but Azumarill was really too slow to use it that well. The physical special split was incredibly kind to Azumarill, giving it the opportunity to finally use stab moves with its attack stat for a bit of more power. And let's not forget that water is quite a good attacking type as well. Huge power made the newly discovered Aqua Jet's power, well, huge, and the increased priority meant Azumaro was finally capable of overcoming its awful speed. With nice resistances, some okay bulk, and an absolutely incredible ability that gained even more power in conjunction with Choice Band, Azumaro was finally starting to come to its own. Return and Ice Punch or Super Power gave it some alright coverage as well. That said, it was still far from Poke God status. Using any more of its powerful moves meant letting go of that Aqua Jet priority, and Azumaro's 50 base speed was still its bane. Although Sub Punch was still a viable strategy, especially because the buoyant bunny's HP stat was large enough to hit the magical number of 101 for substitutes, which didn't die to seismic toss, it fared worse against tanks. Huge power may make Azumaro hit like a truck, but that's about all Azumaro could do. And the true truck power was actually illegal, because Belly Drum and Aqua Jet weren't allowed together due to breeding complications. Other offensive Pokemon like Metagross, Machamp, Snorlax, or Scizor could also match its power. What's more, those Pokemon all had other things to offer as well, be it high speed, bulk, defensive typing, coverage, or recovery. Azumaro could could dish it out, sure, but it just wasn't quite good enough to make it into overuse. Although it functioned as a premier wall breaker in underuse. If it had been able to use Belly Drum and Aqua Jet together, it would have easily overcome its limited move pool. But that just wasn't the case. Yet. 
Azumaro and Rain was absolutely terrifying. It wasn't so much a revenge killer as much as a revenge murderer. Able to one hit KO Terrakion, Volgarota, and even Thunderous T and Tornadus after rocks. While it didn't appreciate being forced off of an Aqua Jet or its Niagara Falls sized waterfall, it also had a good punch behind its coverage moves like Super Power and Ice Punch. Picking up nice KOs on Dragonite, the Laddie, Salamence, and Blissey, while Double Edge doubles down on its power and high HP. Azumarill packed all the force of a Class A Monsoon into rain teams, but it absolutely needed to be run in rain, or else it just didn't cut it as such a one-dimensional Pokemon with a limited move pool. In rain, only Jellicent and Restog Gyarados could counter it, but other Pokemon that resisted water proved to be good checks, like Celebi, Toxicroak, Ferrothorn, Gastrodon, and others. While that's not a super large list of checks, it was also very easy to maneuver Azumaro into a counter situation because it was just so predictable. It wasn't like a gigantic freighter crashing through your team in the rain, but changing direction wasn't its forte, and out of the storm it was decidedly mediocre. Despite its power, Azumaro's reliance on rain meant it was most definitely underused purely because it was such an all or nothing Pokemon. And despite being an aquatic nightmare, its move pool was a shallow puddle. It didn't have the added benefit of not being negatively impacted by the rain complex ban, as it didn't utilize Swift Swim or anything similar, purely the water boost. I do remember people catching each other off guard using Sap Sipper when it had to go against grass types, but using Sap Sipper means you don't have huge power, so I don't really think that was that viable in the grand scheme of things. In VGC, Azumaro was ever present as a check to common other Pokemon. Aqua Jet was something any Pokemon weak to water had to be wary of, and just having an Azumaro on your side of the field meant your opponent would have to think twice about throwing out their Infernape or Excadro. VGC is where Azumaro's bulk really shone as well, as being able to live one more hit meant one more Aqua Jet or a turn for the opponent as opposed to just dying to its counters. It still hated Jellicent and Gyarados, but Azumaro did quite well for itself in VGC 2012. Too bad it didn't have Belly Drum yet, but we'll get to that. And and here, finally, Azumaro comes into its own, and all by embracing its cuteness. That's right, Azumaro is a fairy type now, and boy that is a huge buff. An immunity to dragons and resistances against fighting and dark type moves meant Azumaro's bulk, usually just a nice side note to its terrifying strength, now made it a hard to kill behemoth as opposed to just the usual behemoth it was beforehand. With more, play rough is an awesome fairy type stab move, combining the benefits of both double edge and ice punch, which was coverage neutrally and super effectively and power all in one move. With that slot freed up, Azumaro can now reliably run super power to hit steel types, or even go in on knockoff to dispatch one of its oldest counters, Slowbro. What's more, Belly Drum was finally legal with the requisite Aqua Jet, which was one hell of a combo, along with a move pull that had been improved over four generations that made for one scary water rabbit. Even Ferrothorn and Amoongus could be O-Code by a plus six Azumaro knockoff, which is pretty absurd. Finally, Assault Vest Azumaro played towards its tanky nature, giving Azumaro a niche as a threatening pivot into anything it resisted, and you didn't even have to change its moveset. As for counters, and well, actually they're more like checks at this point, the aforementioned Amoongus and Ferrothorn did extremely well against any Azumarill that wasn't Belly Drum. Ferrothorn could potentially be 2 hit KO'd by Super Power, but if it got in clean, it would beat Azumarill straight up. And with that fairy typing, Azumarill is now weak to poison types, like Mega Venusaur or Tentacruel, which both gave Azumarill a lot of trouble. And physically defensive steel types like Skarmory, Mega Scizor, and Magnezone could switch in on Play Rough, or even potentially a waterfall off the choice band set and immediately threaten the KO. Basically, physically defensive Pokemon in general stopped the Zumaro quite well unless it had a belly drum up. That's what you get when you're a one-note Pokemon. But becoming a fairy finally gave Azumaro the boost it had so long awaited, and it triumphantly landed itself a coveted spot in overuse after five generations. Azumaro's buffs transferred over very nicely into VGC. While the large amount of electric attacks weren't something it was pleased with, it was still an immediate threat on the field due to Aqua Jet. With other Pokemon able to give it support via Rage Powder or Follow Me that allowed it to reliably get belly drum up, this thing knocked suckers out. It was especially threatening under Tailwind and and the ability to potentially check Talonflame was highly regarded. In fact, Azumarill even won Nugget Bridge's 2014 VGC Invitational on the team of Baz Anderson paired, fittingly enough, with Raichu, its one-time thought relative from its peekaboo days, a fitting hype for it to have finally reached a happy ending. Though again, there are a lot of Gen 6 electric types and grass and poison types in VGC, so it might have been kind of hard to put Azumarill on a team at some times, but it's definitely viable. 
So how good was Zazumaro actually? Well, for the most part, it certainly wasn't a Poke God, and at some point it was even a little below average. But once it got that combination of Aqua Jet and Huge Power, it was terrifying. Sure, it didn't make overuse until Generation 6 because of its fairy typing and finally getting Belly Drum with Aqua Jet, but despite its cute appearance, Azumarill has been a truly menacing threat for a while now, mowing down all who oppose it with a smile and some tremendous force. And as of this video with Gen 7, at least for singles, I hear it's pretty alright with Z Belly Drum. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you liked the video, you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And of course, as I always say every video, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. And also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to all of you for watching again. I would not be able to do any of this without you. And that's it. See you next time, everyone.